Today is uh, Tuesday, July the 11th, 2023, and we're talking about our attitude. I'd like to read just a little bit about how our attitude is to be out of Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, 4, and 5 in the Amplified Translation of the Bible. Do nothing from factional motives, through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, are prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself, thinking more highly of one another than you do of yourselves. Let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned for not merely his own interest, but also each for the interest of others. Verse five. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. So yesterday we talked about the fact that, and it's my opinion, it's my personal opinion that our identity, knowing our identity in Christ Jesus, produces a security in us, which allows us to have transformation to be like Christ in our attitude. So I want to tell you something today that I know you know, but maybe Satan has lied to you and you believe that lie. You will always be of great value. You were created in God's image and for God's purposes. He fearfully and wonderfully formed you in your mother's womb. So I must believe that. That's what the word of God teaches. I'm created in the image of God and God fearfully and wonderfully formed me when I was in my mother's womb. I have great value, so much value that Jesus Christ, God's one and only son, became a man, lived a sinless life and died on the cross because of my sin, because he wanted to restore what Adam had lost by his disobedience he wanted to restore right relationship with the Father God for every human being. And now that's possible. I can have life transformation. Sin can go down the tube, so to speak, be defeated, be mortified, be put to death, and I can live the way God intended me to live. So I would conclude from that, therefore, since I'm a great value, being obedient in what you know to do and living in that lifestyle, will provide some awesome identity and security in your life. It's not that life will be without struggles. And sometimes that struggle is concerning your identity because all these voices and all this pressure just keeps pounding against us. Lies, deceit, messages bombarding us that we're really not who God says we are, but we are, we really are. So when I just become obedient to what God says about me, what his word declares about me, even though I have some of these battles and struggles, but when I live in obedience to what God's called me to do, my identity will be no secret. I'm created in God's image. I'm beloved of the Father. I've turned from my sin repented of it, received forgiveness and redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the result is I'm secure because the word of God says I have an inheritance that no one can take away. And Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, and receive you unto myself. So I want you to hear this. If you hear nothing else today, you're of great value in the eyes of God. And I pray that you're of great value in somebody else's eyes. But the truth is, that's enough because that secures your identity. Gary Smalley, uh, in an illustration from Rev Magazine, some years ago, this story was told. Les Parrott III shared that story when he and his wife, Leslie, had stepped onto the platform in the Rose Garden Arena in Portland, Oregon, where nearly 10,000 people had assembled for a marriage seminar. That night, each of the six speakers were, uh, was to give a, a brief overview of what we'd be speaking on over the next couple of days. And just before Leslie and I went to the platform, uh, uh, my friend, this is Les Parrott speaking, 
Gary Smalley captivated the crowd by holding up a crisp $50 bill and asking the massive audience, who would like this $50 bill? And hands went up everywhere. And he said, I'm going to give this $50 bill to one of you, but first let me do this. And he proceeded to crumple up the bill. And then he asked, who still wants it? And the same hands went up. I want it. That didn't change the value of it. Well, he replied, what if I do this? And he dropped the $50 bill on the, on the stage. He grinded it, ground into it, the, into the floor, and he pushed it around with his foot, and, and he picked it all up crumpled and dirty. Now who wants it, he said. And again, hands are going up everywhere. And this is what Gary Smalley said. You've all learned a valuable lesson. No matter what I did to the money, you still wanted it because it didn't decrease in value. It's still worth $50. And many times in our lives, we're dropped, crumpled, and ground into the dirt by the decisions we make and the circumstances that come our way. We feel as though we're worthless. But no matter what's happened or will happen, you'll never lose your value in God's eyes. Dirty or clean, crumpled or finely creased, you're priceless to the creator God. Many of you listening today have been your own worst critic. Your personal critiquing has caused you to lose sight of God's love for you. Some of you have been criticized by a spouse repeatedly, by your parents, by your siblings. Some of you, as a parent, it's your children who have ripped you so deeply that you wanted to give up. Others, you've had a boss or fellow employees, a neighbor who has criticized you and you have felt worthless. Some of you have made choices that destroyed any image you have that anyone could love or care about you. And I want you to hear this today because this will affect your attitude forever. God loves you. He desires relationship with you. I'm talking about the creator of the universe. He wants you to know that no, how, no matter how deeply crushed, how broken, how shattered your life seems to be, he can restore you. He can give you a new life. I repeat, God loves you. Your life isn't over. God is not through with you yet. There's still more to your story. God's about to turn your life around. You were created in his image for his purpose and his glory. If you will but surrender to him today, turn from looking at yourself and look to God, come clean from your sin, he will restore and make new your life. Will you pray with me? Father, I'm believing right now someone's watching this video and they are broken, crushed, shattered. Some of it's their choices, some of it's circumstances. Some of it's just been people crushing them, but you are telling them you love them. I'm asking God, the Holy Spirit, just draw them to the Father right now as they turn from their sin and their self-centeredness and they say, here I am, God, do with me as you please. And as they repent of their sin, restore life to them, restore hope to them, restore identity to them, and bless them with your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you're not finished with us. Others have thrown us on the trash heap, but God says, I love you and I will redeem you. I paid for you by my son's blood. Come home to me today. I'm praying they'll do so and I'm praying those that, that need to be reaffirmed that God is in their life. He cares about them, that they'll turn off the other voices and listen for the voice of God. I speak Jesus over them today in your name, Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace to you. Turn to Jesus today. He loves you. Have a fantastic day.